Uh, so here I am cruising along in the high desert of Southern California, uh, headed to Tehachapi, and I'm uh, going to go see vintage V12s, Mike and uh, Jose, and uh, just talk about some angles I've got there and some other things. And uh, anyway, one of the things that you notice when you're coming up here that you can't miss on the drive in is all of these windmill farms. They are everywhere. This is just a little of them on the hill, but uh, I just passed a whole ton of them. Got a nice little pass here. I've flown down this pass a few times and we're tri-motors and V25s and anyway. It's been a long time since I've been out here to vintage V12, so we'll see what's happening and what's changed. Okay, I am almost there. My GPS took me to a church in the middle of town, so I just called to talk to Jose, and I think I know where I'm going. That is the end of the Tehachapi Airport runway right there, so here we go. Good rig business park. These guys are supposedly down at the end. I got a call about 15 minutes ago. Mike is stuck in traffic trying to get out of LA. There was a fire and they had everybody stop and he's trying to bypass the way I came up. But anyway, that's what's happening. So we shall see. I have not been here in years. So I really don't know where I'm going. Alrighty, I believe this is it. I have not been here in forever. I don't see a sign, but I see a Merlin and I see a Jose. Alright, Camposado! <laughs> I think I'm at the right spot. There we go. Okay, let's go check out Vintage V12s. Looks like an engine shop. What's happening? What's happening? Good to see you, Jose. What's been happening? Well, we're just uh, flying along. Just God, how long ago was since I was here? It's been quite a few years. It has been. Good, yeah. good. A lot, yeah. a lot of run to the bridge. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. Well, yeah. good. So Mike's stuck in traffic, and uh, I thought maybe he said maybe get a little bit of a tour or something yeah. at the shop. Yeah, That'd no be problem. Great. I'll show you around. So this is all the where you do all this the, is the main, this is stuff. The main, yeah, this is the main shop. Okay. And basically what the way it works is each one of these racks is one engine. So okay. we're working with 16 engines right now. We have 16 engines in the works. Oh my gosh. And then we have 10 engines in the warehouse, which is a backlog. Yeah. As we finish one out, we turn another one apart, bring it in here. So as you can see, engines on all different stages. Oh my gosh. So heads and banks for a Merlin? Yeah, this is for actually, this one's right here. This is this and that is a set for a mosquito. Oh a mosquito really? mosquito that is going together for a... Uh, that will be number four. Well, I think it's for Rod Lewis. Rod Lewis. Oh yeah, Rod Lewis. I saw it. I was down in New Zealand in yep. April. Yep. I'll this be done. So is this a one one four? No, this is actually Merlin twenty five. Merlin twenty five. Okay. Yeah, Merlin twenty five. That's the way. That's the way it uh, came in. Huh. So we have this one for that. Uh, 421, 422. We're doing uh, for a Spitfire for uh, here in the states. We're doing another one for uh, England, and we're doing uh, two Bouchons for. Uh, for the guys in Australia, huh. in uh, New Zealand, but are being done in, uh, in England as well. Uh, what, are, what are these cylinders down here? These, these are, are Allison. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, they yeah, look Allison. different. Yeah, this is actually for uh, the P uh, 63? P40. P40. Uh, okay. P40. Yeah, we're doing right now three. We're doing one for uh, uh, Texas Flying Legends, which is this one, mm -hmm. and then we're doing one for uh, Rob. Uh, Rob Collins for his P40, uh -huh. 
and hmm. we're doing uh, another one for a P51A model. God, if only so. the if only the Brits had done the roller bearings. Yeah, that's definitely the way to the way to go. Yeah, once these things these things are adjusted and it just, it just goes. Yeah, see on the uh, on the Allison when the cam goes around here, you see these little roller bearings right there. So when the lobes go around, it makes the valves go up and down. On a Merlin, it's metal to metal, and uh, sometimes they can the hard chrome will chip and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, makes a big difference on it. Wow. This one right here is one of the engines for the for the Bouchon. Uh, the ones that came from uh, Honey Edwards. Yeah, oh really? This is one of them. Yeah, we shipped one already. This is number two. We got two more in the warehouse. So huh. we're actually doing four. So did somebody split up the batch? Or, uh, or is one, one guy doing one them all guy, on No, one guy bought them and then he sold two to one guy and two to another guy. Oh, I see. Guy. Okay. He kept, I think he kept like four. Oh my god, that's so right. That's how, that's how he did it. Oh, so, good. This one is for uh, from Mustang for uh, Germany. Uh, originally, the the Speedfire, the early Speedfires, were this color. Can somebody really turn the radio off? Uh, Matt. Well, and awesome, then, uh, thanks. And then we did a. Uh, he saw the 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 engine when we finished it, and he liked the color, so he said, "I want my engine to be the oh, same as the Speedfire." Good. So that's what this that's what this came into. Hmm. And that's the uh, that's the actual engine for those heads they're going to be building for the mosquito. So that's the actual engine. Awesome. So this is a super charger for it. Mm -hmm. And of course this is the ones for for this one. Hmm. So everything comes apart all the way down to the very studs, and then we start building them up. From so there. so where do you do like the cylinder honing and all that kind of stuff? You know, grinding yeah. the valves and we have uh, we come this way. This is where we do the honing. Oh, so there we go, okay. Go in here, and we just hone them out, open them up. But most of them right now in the Merlins, we're only using this like on the on the Allison to go like a plus 20 or plus 10. Huh. But on the Merlins, basically, uh, they get thermochrome. And okay. And once they're thermochrome, it comes back to a standard size, and then you can you can put a thousand hours on it. You'll never wear them. I'll, I'll be darned. Now, do they do, do, do y'all put like a cross hatch pattern on yes. it? Yeah. It, it? Well, it comes. You can see it right here. Yeah. See the cross on it. Huh. Yeah. So, so we, do you have a machine that does that? Actually, well, we do it with that, and then we come back and do it with the flex hone. And the flex, what that does, it basically has the rough cut, and there's two different stones you can use for that. And then after that is done, then you come back and do a, a couple of hmm. uh, different of the of the soft. Well, how, but how, how, this looks to me like you're. So are you just doing this yeah, when you're doing sort of, it? Yeah. You're sort oh, of, yeah. oh. So, so you're not. It, there's not a. There's not something that's set up on a machine. No, it's it you can you set up the travel on it, and then you set up the tension on it, depending on the other. Right, but as far as the, the pattern or whatever, yeah, no, no, it's strictly no, this, done. No, this is manually. just for cutting. This one is. Oh, just it's just for, for cutting. Yes, yes, for cutting. Yeah. So. Huh those up interesting yeah it leaves a smooth once that's cut leaves a smooth finish then you do the cross the cross hatch with the actual uh, on another machine on, oh with the actual uh, cross hatch machine so oh, wow look at that big old front there you nose you know case gears that's another the, blower for blower for the uh, bouchon uh, they're doing coolant pumps on this one hmm. this is basically one of the ones well the bouchons we just torn apart so basically they start cleaning all the stuff up. They go, when they turn them apart, they go into these cardboard boxes. And as they get clean, they go into these black, you know, plastic boxes. So hmm. we know what the stuff is it's done. And then each part, you know, you inspect and check for yeah, after, tolerances. Yeah, after once it gets clean, on the turn down, it gets the first inspection, whatever is rejected right away, we take that out. It gets clean after that. And then we inspect the second time. Hmm. And then from there, once all the inspection is done on the parts, then it goes into Magnaflux. Once they get through Magnaflux, then it's ready for, for the main assembly. Hmm. Then the final guy does another. It's interesting. A little, kind of a little blower thing for the pump there. Yeah, these are the these are the later pumps. The later pumps have actually how like this, and the other ones had more like a, almost like the impeller type. Uh huh. It just just uh, didn't have. It wasn't in close like hmm. this one. So. Cool. These are the pumps. 
And this is uh, oh, man, that's a, a accessory gear case, I guess, or whatever. Hmm. Also, this is going on a P40, and as you can see, everything gets redone inside. And now, is, it, is anybody doing like a, the you know the earlier Allisons on the P40s, like what they originally would have had? Uh, just a few guys. Just a few just guys. Just a few guys are actually doing it, where they actually come in and say, "Okay, I want the you know Dash 91 or a 93, whatever the case might be, depending on right. the P40 they're working on." Hmm. Uh, same thing with the P38s. Some of the guys want the early ones, but uh, really, yeah, it's very, very rare. Most of the guys are yeah, just yeah. putting the the later engines. Yeah, one eleven, one thirteen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Huh. We still have you know, we still have the eighty sevens, the eighty nines. God, it's look at all those cranks. Yeah, you can see the differences on them. You know, you have basically this is the Merlin, yeah, then the Allison and the Griffin. Oh my gosh! So the huh. size differences on them. So. So now any of the, like the German, like the Daimler Benz or something, you do that somewhere else or you do that here? This company right here uh, does the Allison's, the Merlin's, and the Griffin's. Right, okay. And that's the area that I'm basically in charge on, on this side. Okay. The, then we have this building, that building, and half of the building on the right side. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we're going to go through that inventory in, in a little bit. Good, good, and good. Then from there, the next company is the carburetors. Mm -hmm. All they do is carburetors all over the world. What's that guy's name? Uh, Marty. Marty, okay, yeah, because I think we, he still might have a DC3 carburetor yeah, of ours. Okay. Or, so we can yeah, stop good, by good. Yeah, good. So there's Marty right there. And then after that, then it's, there's uh, the last two buildings basically is where they do all the rare stuff. Yeah, uh, okay. German stuff, the DB601, mm -hmm. the 605s, hmm. and that's all Mike's area right there. That's his right, because you guys are kind of, you're going to focus on more of the V12s and right. stuff, and Mike's going to focus on radials and, right. and he, some he of the has, specialty He has things. the radials and the specialty engines. That's, well, his, good. Uh, that's his main uh, focus. Well, I hope, to get, I hope to get to see him. He said there was, uh, the traffic was bad, and he was probably an hour and a half away 20, 30 minutes ago. So. Okay, so yeah. So we, we'll yeah, go yeah, around, yeah. and then well, maybe by good. the time he gets here, he'll be a... Uh, so these are like uh, the crank... This is the actual Cat shells bearings for the, or? yeah the shells for the rods so they're ready to go out to be plated so that and mm -hmm. that and that they go out so you know, we'll pack here. them up and get them ready. So. Hmm. Wow. All sorts of pretty cool parts. There's a cam shaft. See, is that a Merlin cam or? Yep, the Merlin cam. Yeah, so the valves just hit right on there, and the Allison's got the roller bearings that go around, which is right. a little bit nicer design. But uh, so, so I know early on in the early days, they were having some of the cam things were chipping and stuff. So, did they uh, come up with a, a fix on that, or did yeah. Jack Roush do something about? No, no. Actually, what they did is a guy in Canada has been doing it for about 15 years, 20 years. They uh, they actually started making what they call the carbide fingers, and basically instead of having chrome on there, right. they get rid of the chrome. They put a piece of carbide on there. Oh, and okay. They, and and how, so how, so what do they do? Just somehow metal metal kind of the same. Logically, yeah, the same concept concept as they have on the like the cutting tools. The same thing. Right, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Great. And then if you come this way. There, Allison. It's all induction deal there. After cooler radiators. And then on this side, we have all the parts inventory here and upstairs and it's all in computers new old stock parts basically uh -huh. just there mm. we have one here and on this side oh wow all the way, all the way oh my gosh and this side is where we where we test the, the magnetos mm -hmm. so basically there's a magneto that comes in and not happy we have a way to test them to run on it hmm. figure out if there's anything, uh, anything wrong with it. Well, pretty much everything here is all 12 cylinder. Right. Right. Anything that uh, that we have in this shop is uh, so the Alice and the Merlins or the Griffins. So that's pretty much uh, hmm. all we do. How often do you get a Griffin come through? We're probably doing a Griffin right now every other year. 
Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah we're actually doing right now. We have hmm. two in the works. We have two reference that we're working on. And speaking of Riffon, there it is. There we go. Well, it's got a short little nose case on it. Is that, it, it, does it still have a gear gearbox? Uh, the gearbox for the all the drives. Yeah, no, no, for this. I mean, is this, this, a, this, is, a, this is it? This is it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is it right here, and yeah, the propeller goes. Yeah, goes right, okay. Side. Yeah. So, this one, uh, we're waiting. We did a test run on this one uh, about five years back. And they're getting ready to put it on the on the airplane, so they send it back so we can uh, redo the carburetor hmm. and then put it on the test and make sure everything is happy. And then uh, this for a spit, this for a Spitfire, yeah. God, I've got one of these for, and these these Spitfire Griffins are rare, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. This ones are getting pretty pretty scary, hmm. especially you know, I mean the 57, 58s are all over the place, but this ones are the Shackleton, the Shackleton ones, those are yeah. incredible. But this ones are. Pretty Hard to come by. So great. Yeah. All right. And we got just one more part. Porcupine. Don't have all the room over there, so basically we just uh, when we when we're ready to assemble this, then we we'll roll it back onto that side and we we'll start hmm. going at it. So. Oh, magnetos for all sorts of engines. Parts of parts, right? Parts of parts. That's an early Merlin there, isn't it? It's a Merlin. It's a Merlin. Dash one? No, it's a Dash That's seven. That's a Dash seven? It's a Dash seven. Yeah, oh, Dash seven. have the optical loop. Dash one doesn't have an optical loop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. And what was it? What what what's the difference between a three and a seven? Uh, it, it looks the same. The three and the seven external looks the same. Internally, there's some uh, changes. Uh huh. So, but it can be turned into a seven. Okay. It's different gear ratios, different gears, and fuel modifications. Hmm. But uh, but it's pretty much. If you look at them both side by yeah, side, yeah, yeah. you won't be able to tell the difference. I'll be darned. Cool. Got a valve grinding machine there. This is one of the valve grinders there. The other one is over on the other side. We have the grinding. It's a test truck. We pretty much have everything uh, that we need. And we can run, uh, we have it set up so we can run either any of the three engines here. We used to run the DB 601s and 605s as well uh -huh. on this stand, but now Mike set up the other stand to run the 601s and 605s. Y'all do this here, you take it out where it's not so noisy. Uh, we we'll put it right on the front. Yeah. And we just basically run it there. Okay. And there's, there's nothing else that way. Right, yeah, the traffic. Yeah, yeah, the traffic, so. Good. The only, and we don't have neighbors close by, the only neighbors are right there. The cemetery. <laughs> cemetery, they're not continuing yet. This is, uh, Another engine we just got in, so we're tearing all apart and we're cleaning one rack over there so we can put all the oh, Okay, so this is yeah. kind of like the tear down. It all goes on the rack there when it gets stripped, right? And it goes into the. And then it goes into that yeah. area and then it gets all cleaned up. And hmm. so what they do is they take pictures of the whole engine as they come in and then mm -hmm. they do a book that has an inventory so we know how the engine came in, what it had, what it didn't have. Right. So all the stuff is. Uh, Oh, that's it's, uh, good. Documented. It's inventory is documented. Huh. So know and how, how many people total work in all of these companies here? All the companies? Oh, and all the companies would probably have between 30 and 35. Really? Okay. Yeah. Huh. So in this company, we have 12. Uh, 12, 13, 14 hmm. with uh, the NNI in the run of the office. What so, is that? This is a... Uh,